Okay, this is how you can make a thread safe version of like a deck or a vector or something like that. So let's say that you've got some threads that are like uh, connecting to the server, reading data from the server, or reading um, commands from this, the user, like you have a thread to handle mouse input or keyboard input. And then you've got somebody that's consuming those commands. So you've got data coming in from the internet, got data coming in from the keyboard, data coming in from the mouse. Each of those could be a different thread and they could all be putting everything into like a command queue. And then when it's time to process those commands, it will pull commands out of the command queue. And so let's simulate this by making, uh, I don't know, a function called mouse, uh, mouser, let's say. Um, and then we'll just, uh, what should we do, what should we do? Um, let's just every so often we're gonna use sleep for a random amount of time, rand modulus, 10 plus one, it's gonna give us a random number from one to 10 times one million microseconds. So what this is gonna do, we could actually just use sleep, I guess. Sleep is in seconds, microsleep is in microseconds, but it's effectively the same thing. So implicit conversion changes, signedness, fine, whatever, I don't care. Okay, uh, let's make this fine, unsigned. So we're gonna have this thing. It's gonna it's gonna sleep for a second. It's gonna sleep for two seconds. Sleep for ten seconds, and it's kind of it's gonna simulate uh, mouse commands. And then we'll have one of these for like keyboard commands. And then we'll have one for like um, uh, network. Network commands, and so each one of these guys, we're gonna put these into like a wild true loop or something like that. True. Okay, so all these guys are going to just periodically wake up, put some data into the command queue, and then we'll have another thread, maybe main, It'll sit there and process the, the commands. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so hello there, General Kenobi. We don't need you anymore. So we're gonna have one thread that is gonna be mouser. And we'll make this a J thread because uh, we're never gonna join it. Um, we don't care. Like for things like just something that just infinitely just talks on the network, like it dies when it dies. We don't actually need to wait for it to finish. Um, anytime you do a command where you or like spot, or you're spawning a thread, and you need to wait for it to finish. Use join, even with a, even with a, a J thread, you would use, you'd use join. But for this, we're just going to spawn it off. It's going to run infinitely. We don't ever have to cast join on it. Um, and never commands. Like this. Like that. And we've already got a thread two, so we'll call this thread three and. Uh, then we we will just go into an infinite loop after this, and uh, um, yeah. So let's pause here. So we are going to be consuming, we are going to be parsing the commands. We're going to be consuming data out of this queue. So now our 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 quest is to make a deck that is thread safe, and to make a deck that is thread safe, we need mutex. It's not in here, and that comes with lock guard as well. Thank you. And so this uh, thread safe deck here, um, it's going to have a mutex called my mutex, because why not? And that's in the private section. No, that's a, yeah, let's make this a class. And also in the private section, we're going to have a deck, which we're going to need to include. We're going to make a deck of strings called my deck. Deck is hashtag q. I always, I always love outspeeding IntelliSense. Okay, so our public uh, methods, our constructor, we don't need a constructor, we don't need a destructor, don't need a copy constructor. Maybe we'll delete the copy constructor. I don't I don't feel 
safe copying this thing. So uh, we will say thread thread safe deck taking in a const thread safe deck by reference equals delete. So we are going to have no copy constructor. So I don't think we should be able to copy these things. And, uh, and we just make a default uh, default constructor that does nothing. Um, because these guys will construct themselves. It'll, it'll be fine. All right, so all we really want on this thing is a push function where we can push a command in, like go north, go south, that kind of stuff, and a pop function that will pull data out of the deck. And we want to do this in a thread safe manner because we're going to have four different threads reading and writing to it at the same time. And we don't want them stepping on each other's feet. You've seen before last week, these things explode when everybody's reading and writing to them at the same time. So we need simply a push function that takes a string s. And we need a, a string pop that gets the first string out of the um, gets the first string out of the, the deck. Okay. So and I'm calling it no discard because if you are not catch if you're not doing a thing with that command, you're probably wrong. Uh, and neither of these are const. Okay, this is cool. All right. So for push. We are going to do a lock guard, lock guard Bob. Now let's give it. Let's give it a different name. Let's not call it Bob. Let's call it uh, LG. That's a that's an unusual name for a lock guard LG. And we're going to lock down my mutex. So when LG gets constructed, it tries lock taking the lock on the my mutex. If nobody else is there, it's fine. It moves on to the next line of code. If the mutex is currently locked, it waits. Okay. So if we have two threads that try to come in at the same time, they block. The second one blocks, the first one goes through. And this is true even if one person is pushing and one person is popping. This is the mistake I've seen a lot of people making. They have separate mutexes. That doesn't help. If you have one mutex for push and one mutex for pop, you got a problem because one thread could then be in push, one thread could be in pop, and they can explode the uh, the deck together if you do it, if you just happen to trigger a reallocate or something like that. So you want one mutex for the entire Deck. Anytime you're doing anything that's going to be manipulating the um, the deck, um, you want to use one shared mutex for it. Technically, you could read from it, like if you wanted a um, like a front function that just read from it. But uh, what if you're reading from it when somebody triggers a reallocation? I wouldn't risk it. So if only you know if you could guarantee somehow people are only like just read only values from it. Maybe get away with not using mutex, but it seems very dangerous to me. I wouldn't do that. Okay, so we have one mutex for both of the functions that actually change the deck. Okay. And so for push, we are just going to say my deck dot pushy backy string. And for this one, we're going to say string rec dot equals my deck, my deck dot front gets the first value of the deck uh, and then we will call my deck dot pop front okay. and then we have to return right now. and we're done that's the whole thing that is that is a thread safe deck Eight minutes, probably half of which was explanations. And me typing out these made of thread things. Okay. So uh, that's it. Uh, it's now thread safe. You can push to it, you pop to it. Only one person can be reading and writing to it at a time because they share the mutex between them. So here, let's just make up some stuff. So we will say, oh, we need to actually make a, uh, we actually need to make one. So we will call this one PSQ, the thread safe. PSQ dot push back um, mouse movement. Uh, you would actually probably put the X and the Y values in there. Uh, not push back. This is push. Yeah, maybe we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Let's let's simulate mouse movement plus two string.
Okay, so this is going to construct a string that will randomly generate, oh, the mouse is here now, the mouse is here now, the mouse is here now. And the mouse is going to move once every one to ten seconds. Okay. And uh, so we're mocking a, a mouse input. In reality, this would be getting read from Deerim GUI. Deerim GUI has a function that will tell you where the mouse is, but we're just pretending right now. And so this, this thing is just going to infinitely loop uh, once every, so often it's going to say, oh, the mouse is here now. And then for the keyboard command, we'll do, I don't know. Uh, flip a coin and um, tsq.push. Uh, I don't know. Attack. So the keyboard, every so often, they're going to hit the key to attack, so often hit the key to defend. You know, we could make more mock things. And then from the server, uh, we could be like, I don't know, uh, tsq.push. Uh, your life is now So the, the server will be sending updates on what your current life is and maybe, you know, what other people's lives are and things like that. We're just going to simulate um, it sending updates on what your health is currently. And all of these are going to go into the same shared queue, the thread safe shared queue. And then down here in main, main is actually all these things are going to be reading from different sources, the keyboard, the mouse, the keyboard, uh, the keyboard, the mouse, the keyboard. Wow, we have two keyboards. Uh, it's like <laughs> it's like that one show where the two idiots are typing. Keyboard, mouse, and network. We could feasibly have other inputs as well. All three of those are going to be feeding into a input queue, and then we're going to pull all the information out of the input queue here. So uh, we need one more thing, which is size. And let's grab the lock at the same time. Uh, size. Do you not like size? Type so sorry. Yes, that's correct. Size two. Yes, very good, very good, very good. And we will return uh, my deck dot because we need to know when it's empty. <laughs> okay, so while that, okay, so well, the while loop instead of the while loop. So while the thread safe queue has commands left in it, uh, we will just pull them out. So string next command equals tsq dot pop. And we'll just say executing. Input for him. Next command. Thank you. And there we go. So this the the main loop here is going to be pulling commands out of it. Uh, this this area down here is going to have a giant if statement. You know, like if the command is move the mouse, if the command is attack, if the, you know, if, uh, if the command is your health is now, then we'll be updating variables. We're just going to be just simulating that right now. So no, we open MP. We're not using that right now, and we run it, and uh, there we go. It's a long delay, <laughs> right? So there we go. We got some commands coming in, right? So we got three at once there, and so the uh, the main loop is just sitting there constantly. You're like, is there anything to be done? Is there anything to be done? Is there anything to be done? And you can see here uh, we've got commands coming in from three sources, and we're reading from the shared queue in a thread safe fashion. Sometimes you'll get two things that happening at once. It's fine. It's thread safe. And then when we quit, no seg ball. Because <laughs> we're using J threads, right? Those are J threads are great for things that just run forever and you never um, need to quit them. You know? Um, and then if we ever got a command for like, I don't know, quit or something, like uh, we terminate. But... Yep, that's that. 
So I will put this code up here. Uh, this will be copy main.cc to slash public slash thread safe q.cc. And you can all admire, praise, observe, research, look at that code forever, or at least until the end of the semester. All right, that's how you make a thread safe data structure. Peace.